In the six months following the Battle of Stones River, the Union Army encamped here at Murfreesboro and the Confederate Army set up down around Tullahoma and Shelbyville will prepare for the next coming campaign, which will be the one we're commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Tullahoma campaign. And this is really going to be, as the title of our weekend's programs uh, says, is going to be a campaign of contrasts. Because the Union Army, for the most part, is going to be doing a lot of new and unique things and making changes and tweaking things to make themselves better. When we come to the campaign that happens at the end of June 1863, something has changed. And that something is that the two armies have been doing entirely different things vis-a-vis uh, -vis a number of, of things, logistics, communications, the weapons and the way they'll use those weapons in the fight that are going to change the balance of power here in the Confederate heartland. Old Napoleon said, an army travels on its stomach. And supplying an army during the Civil War has proven from the very get-go, and really will through the entire war, prove to be one of the biggest problems for both armies during the war. And having Murfreesboro is great, but Rosecrans, General William S. Rosecrans, commander of the Union Army, took command just a few months before the Battle of Stones River, so didn't have much of a chance to kind of get a handle on things before that campaign began. He is now looking at his main objective militarily, which is the city of Chattanooga. Because Chattanooga is where a lot of rail lines come together. Chattanooga is one of those. Particularly because the rail, one of the railroads that connects at that city actually directly connects the Western Theater here, west of the Appalachian Mountains, with the Eastern Theater over there by Richmond and Washington, over in Virginia and Maryland. So that is a critical connection for the Confederates to hold, and one the Union would sure like to deny them and then use Chattanooga itself as a base to continue diving into the heartland of the South. So when we leave here and we start heading towards Chattanooga, what do we run into almost immediately as we head on out of here? Mont Eagle Mountain, among other things. I mean, we get into the Cumberland Plateau or the Cumberland Mountains. Do you see a lot of farms and houses out there as you're going by? Not really because it's not a particularly hospitable place. And it was even less so back in the 19th century. So this area, it's almost like a dead zone that you've got out there. And the Union Army, as it prepares to move to Chattanooga, has to be thinking about, Rosecrans has to be thinking about, how do I get from here to there and feed my army as I continue to add another 100 plus miles to my supply line? For nearly the entire six month period that the Union Army is here in Murfreesboro, they will construct a massive fortification uh, with you know, artillery platforms called lunettes, curtain walls for the infantry, interior readouts to protect the interior of the fort, altogether almost five miles of earthworks, many of which were 30, 40 feet tall. And you'll see when you, if you go over there that some of them are still pretty darn big. And the entire set of earthworks rings an enclosure of more than 200 acres. In point of fact, this would be the largest earthen fortification of its kind ever built in North America. Be inside of that fort, what Rosecrans wants to have is a base of supply. He'll, he builds it right astride the railroad and the river. The river provides fresh water. The railroad comes right on through. In fact, the fortress itself protects some of the key bridges and river crossings of both the road and the railroad running through town. Also, this place will contain sawmills, grist mills. It'll have a tannery, blacksmith shops. If they can't get it, they can make it here. And so he will put in enough supplies, material, and food to keep 65,000 men in the field for three months. Now, if we think about how the Civil War plays out after the Battle of Stones River and with the beginning of the Tullahoma campaign at the end of June, 1863, the last week of June, they will be in Chattanooga by mid-September. What Rosecrans is doing is essentially he's now got a forward base of operations and from this base he will then launch his campaign and as he gets deeper into the south and heads towards Chattanooga he already has in mind other places like Bridgeport, Alabama, Stevenson, Alabama as well along the Tennessee River where he'll stop and build more of these supply bases to keep securing his line. On the Confederate side however things are not quite as rosy. In fact, the reason the Confederates are stretched out in this incredibly long kind of horseshoe-shaped line running across 
the bottom section of Middle Tennessee above northern Alabama, down around Columbia and Pulaski, Tennessee, and then stretching up around through McMinnville and up to the north is Bragg is having to literally protect his supply base from the Union Army. General Rosecrans, as his army goes stronger and bigger, will stretch and send out his lines. His lines are also about 90 miles long. In fact, it's his pretty tenuous food situation, supply situation, which is ultimately going to force him into the positions that the Union will find him in that will be vulnerable to them when they launch the Tullahoma campaign. So on the Confederate side, you basically have them essentially standing pat just doing what they can to hold on to what they still have here in Middle Tennessee and Northern Alabama to feed themselves, whereas Rosecrans and the Union Army, even though they're hundreds of miles away from their base of supply, are taking proactive actions with the building of Fortress Rosecrans and the creation of this supply dump, which will basically put them in a position that once they start moving on June 24, 1863, they will not have to stop at any time or readjust their, their campaign at any time because of a supply shortage. That's the first inkling we get of the, cha the changes that are going on on the Union side as compared to sort of the not so much different on the Confederate side that is shifting the balance of power here in these six months after the Battle of Stones River. This has been a History Break brought to you by City TV and the Stones River National Battlefield.